Lord barks a lot, brings back with him or her from the Holy Land frankincense and myrrh and gold and smallpox, smallpox for you and smallpox for you and smallpox for everyone, yay! That's kind of what they think happened, or that's what some people, that's a legend uh, that they think, how, how they think smallpox came to Europe. We don't know if that's true or not. There's no real evidence for it. We're going to talk a little bit about this today. I'm Ryan Fabian, and this is Terrifying World. Because that's what they believe. That's the legend. That's the legend. There's that legend that the Crusaders brought smallpox back into Europe from the Crusades any time from 10 1095 to 1291, but it was probably brought in uh, through via trade because that's what we do, you know. We exchange ideas and disease, ideas and disease. And though this though this legend is fairly important because this tells us when smallpox becomes more prevalent in Europe, sometime after the Crusades. And also there could be an ounce of truth to it because we all know that disease and war go hand in hand. They love each other. They're like Ken and Bar. They're like peanut butter and jelly. They're like two peas and an awful pod. We do know that smallpox was well established in Europe by the 16th century. And then it reached a real high point in the late 17th and all throughout the 18th century. The preconditions at this time enabled it to flourish, like industrial development, the commercialization of agriculture, and rapid unplanned urbanization. The existence of smallpox in Europe is also very important because successive waves of colonialization and exploration would spread the disease all throughout the world. By the time the 16th century rolls around, it, it is one of the most important causes of death all throughout the world. And by the time the 18th century comes along, it replaces plague as the greatest killer around. European cities at this time are an awful place. Everybody dies in there. They don't sustain or expand their populations by growth from within, but by a constant influx of outsiders. It was primarily a childhood disease, but every generation or so, oh my god, it would erupt into a huge epidemic and it would kill a tenth of the population. Half the population of any given European city had some experience with the disease. Half the people would be blinded or scarred or disfigured in some way. This was a common thing. Smallpox was a leading cause of blindness. Smallpox was universal and smallpox was airborne. It was not a social disease. It killed kings just as well as it killed the poorest of the poor. Its capacity to kill royalty is one of the reasons why it's such an important disease in history. Smallpox is responsible for killing off the House of Stuart. The last Stuart heirs to the throne died in 1700. This caused a constitutional crisis in England. They didn't want to crown any Catholics. We don't want to crown any dirty Catholics. What are we going to do? So this led to the Act of Settlement of 1701, where they brought in an imported royal family from Germany, the House of Hanover. An imported royal family right over into England because of smallpox. Thanks, smallpox. Smallpox was endemic, and people just got really comfortable with it, and they got very used to it, and it bred a kind of fatalism, like, well, you know, we're going to get smallpox. Everybody gets smallpox, especially the kids. And sometimes they would uh, willingly uh, expose kids to smallpox, people who had mild cases of smallpox, because they knew once you got it, you would be immune. So they'd be like, here is little Cordelius. <laughs> You know, throw him with the smallpox children, and then, and then you know, he'd get sick, and maybe if he lived, then he's immune. So it bred this fatalism of like, well, it's gonna happen, so if it's going to happen, let's just get it out of the way now, you know? And a lot of the time that would happen. Pock marks and smallpox and all this was such, an, was such a prevalent thing in society at the time that, you know, a lot of the time everybody had it. Like, everybody had it. So when you see a painting of these great beauties and these and some gentlemen, uh, their pockmarks aren't painted on. You look at a painting and their pockmarks aren't painted on, like how we Photoshop things off today. Queen Elizabeth herself got smallpox 
and probably had some scars. And that's probably why you see her with all that kabuki makeup on, because you know, that was pancaked on to hide the pock marks. Smallpox was with everybody at all times. It was just a part of European life. How many times have I said that? Why have I said that so much? Well, it's because people also didn't just live with it, but they brought it with them wherever they went. You know, my buddy, my buddy, my buddy and me, we're gonna go to new lands together and see new people. And when they did, when these people did travel over to new lands like the Americas or Australia or New Zealand, they brought smallpox with them. And guess what? They exposed it to people who had no immunity and bad things happened and we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about that next time here on Terrifying World.